It's remarkable that the endowment has stood the test of time, despite the fact that it was written in another period from what we live in. And I think uh, it could be illustrated by the fact that, uh, let's look at education, for example, uh, and higher education. Uh, Mr. Duke wrote that uh, when in the South, uh, education was segregated. How are you going to meet the needs of all people, uh, regardless of race, if you have segregated education? He met it simply by picking universities that served in their own ways, that served the two great human families in North Carolina and, in, uh, as a matter of fact, in other parts of the country too. He gave money or he designated funds for institutions like Duke University and uh, Furman and uh, Davidson that were serving white people only. And he picked a, an African-American institution, historically black institution, that served only blacks under the laws of North Carolina. But what's so interesting is that these institutions now are open to anyone who applies. And by seeking to provide educational opportunities for minorities, for African Americans, in 1924, he was providing for the education of African Americans uh, in 2004 or 8 or whatever. It's very interesting that now these institutions can serve anyone. And uh, he had seen far enough into the future, I hope that's what he had seen, the time when these institutions would be open to anyone regardless of race or previous condition of servitude. And so we've got four important institutions in the state of North Carolina and South Carolina that serve uh, in the field of higher education, everyone. Yeah. I think that one of Mr. Duke's greatest gifts, if not the greatest, is his, to use the word broadly, his child advocacy, uh, his interest in the welfare of children, uh, not merely their health, not merely their education, but their will, their general well-being. Uh, there is, I think, uh, uh, something that surpasses his, his benefaction in other areas, that he thought of the next and the next generation uh, was way, one way of indicating that the future of the world rested on these youngsters. And he wanted to have everything possible for them. Get them started right. Education would be another step to be sure, and he would hope that they would be educated, but they must be started right. They must have the, 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 uh, the best health, they must have the best uh, guidance, they must have the best uh, supervision, uh, the best care. They must enjoy the sensitivity of their elders. And with that, uh, they could be launched uh, onto a uh, scene uh, that would uh, make it possible for them to serve well and to and to have the best life ever. Uh, but the beginning is the important thing. I wish that I had known Mr. Duke because he, he is obviously a remarkable person. And uh, his vision was so great. And his understanding of the needs of people was so great. Uh, I think that he must have uh, been a person of 
of enormous uh, capacity to embrace the human group, the human family. And uh, I think that that was a source of his strength and uh, the way in which he was able to provide the kind of services that he provided because he had this great love for the human family regardless of what it was, whether rich or poor, or black or white, or what have you. And uh, I think that, that's the discernment, that's the insight, that's the, the, the capacity of him to, to embrace everyone that makes his work so valuable. I would characterize Mr. Duke as a man of generous spirit, generous. Uh, it was, it's, it's not the kind of generosity that you get in someone who is sh putting his pocket, putting his hands in his pocket and shelling out money. It's the, it's the sensitivity that uh, makes him understanding of the needs of those around him and his willingness to meet those needs because he had been fortunate enough to acquire the means to share with others. And uh, he was a man of great generosity who shared uh, his accumulated wealth. And that's, that's not only a great gift, that's a great attribute for a human being to have. Now, one of the things that uh, really I always delighted when I was a member of the endowment was to attend the meeting in January when his indenture was read. Uh, you would think that uh, might, one might not look forward to hearing the indenture read, particularly when we all had copies and could read it whenever we wanted to. But the reading of the indenture was a ritual a very sacred ritual, if I may say so. And uh, you then were able to discern the man and his philosophy of life, his outlook. Is that it's all tied in that indenture. And when you see that he's looking to help children, to help the infirm, to help uh, people who were seeking an education and people who wanted uh, some solace in their religious life. That's it. He comprehended the needs of the human being and he met those needs as best he could. And so just reading the indenture was a great experience as you listened to it and as you analyzed what his aspirations were, what his desires were for the human family.